this is not operational. The mm -hmm. Starship is not operational yet. Falcon 9 is. That's why we feel comfortable launching astronauts on it and cargo to the International Space Station. Uh, but Starship is still going through some development. And um, yeah, it, uh, it's just going to take some time. Yeah, space is always hard. SpaceX's latest Starship flight exploded nine minutes after its launch. This isn't just a big loss for the company. It's sending shockwaves through SpaceX's partners, especially NASA. So, what NASA just declared about SpaceX's second consecutive Starship explosion? And more importantly, is this a setback for the Artemis program? Let's dive into today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX's Starship Flight 8 faced an unexpected setback when a fuel leak in one of the engines triggered a massive explosion at an altitude of 145 kilometers, lighting up the skies over Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas. It wasn't the outcome SpaceX had hoped for, but there was still a victory to be found. The Super Heavy booster successfully executed a soft landing at the launch tower, marking a solid step forward in SpaceX's mission to develop a fully reusable rocket system. Just like in previous launches, NASA monitored the flight from start to finish. After the incident, Danny Olivas, a veteran astronaut, promptly spoke with reporters to analyze what had happened. And what we noticed was that by the time we were starting to lose attitude control, only two of the engines were firing, two of the larger engines. And so uh, with two engines, it's just really tough to maintain uh, attitude control. And As a seasoned and highly experienced engineer, he quickly and accurately assessed what had just happened with Starship's engine. The engineer also noted that this incident closely resembled what happened with Ship 33 during Flight 7, stating, We need to pinpoint when it went wrong. Last time, the propellant system had structural trouble, and this could be tied to that. Not only that, but Danny also astutely pointed out the upgrades on Ship 34. Uh, this was an important mission, you know, to be able to test out some of the heat shields. Uh, they had some modifications on Starship uh, to try to help feather some of that the heating uh, and uh, hopefully not have have issues. Uh, half a Starship is covered with a heat shield, and they were trying out different types of heat shield. They had a, a metallic type of heat shield that they were looking at. They were looking at one that was water cooled. Besides analyzing the incident and pointing out areas for improvement, Danny also expressed empathy for the situation, something that helped ease the pressure on Elon Musk as he works to refine Starship. Starship is not operational yet. Falcon 9 is. That's why we feel comfortable launching astronauts on it and cargo to the International Space Station. Uh, but Starship is still going through some development. And um, yeah, it, uh, it's just going to take some time. Indeed, developing a massive vehicle like Starship is an incredibly challenging and complex task. It consumes vast budgets, takes years of relentless effort, and demands the sharpest minds working around the clock to improve the spacecraft day by day. A prime example is NASA's Space Launch System. It took 14 years to develop and cost over $30 billion, yet it's only flown once so far. And unlike Starship, it's not even reusable. All through the interview, Danny didn't throw any criticism. He totally got the huge hurdles Elon Musk and SpaceX were up against fixing and souping up the vehicle. He also knew his words could pile even more pressure on what NASA's expecting from the company. As a long-term partner, NASA has placed huge expectations on SpaceX, especially this year, with the company growing rapidly and carrying the weight of several critical projects. One of NASA's key expectations is for SpaceX to perform at least one in-orbit fuel transfer between two starships in Earth's orbit, a complete game-changer for reaching the moon. This unprecedented feat in human spaceflight will require a fleet of tanker ships, multiple launches, and a complex sequence of orbital maneuvers. Speaking at a press conference, Lisa Watson Morgan, the HLS program manager, made it crystal clear, we've got to have this in 2025. She pointed to Starship version 3, saying, we're pumped for Starship version 3, coming later in 25. That's the one we need for fuel transfers and handling super cold liquids must-haves for a lunar landing. It's a massive challenge, but SpaceX's steady progress is turning heads. Former astronaut Chris Hadfield even posted on X saying, this gets me fired up for our future, adding that SpaceX's relentless pace might be easing some of NASA's concerns about the tight timeline. This is a goal SpaceX absolutely must hit before 2027 for the Artemis 3 mission, the one that will put humans back on the moon. The in-orbit refueling system is critical for the Starship human landing system, which needs around 1,200 tons of propellant to make the trip from Earth orbit to the Moon, land, and return. A single launch from Earth can't carry that much fuel, so the company is building a refueling infrastructure in orbit using a fleet of dedicated tanker ships. Watson Morgan shared her excitement about the project, saying, 
We've seen the fluid lines and all the systems during tests. We've even held some of the components ourselves at their site. But soon, we'll actually get to see them in action, up in orbit. On top of that, NASA is pushing SpaceX to ramp up Starship test flights to prove the vehicle's reliability. The company might need 10 to 15 launches just to get tankers into orbit, not to mention other test flights. NASA hopes SpaceX can hit at least 10 to 12 successful test launches this year to iron out the system. To make this ambitious pace possible, SpaceX is also working on a second launch pad at Starbase, Texas. This new pad, dubbed Launch Pad B, is designed to double the company's launch capacity. According to the plan, Super Heavy will land at Pad A while Starship touches down on Pad B. We might get to witness this moment as soon as Flight 9, possibly happening this mid-April. The timeline has been officially confirmed by Elon Musk. After the recent Starship explosion, he took to X, saying, Today was a minor setback. Progress is measured by time. The next ship will be ready in four to six weeks. Back to the point, when a reporter asked Watson Morgan what SpaceX needs to do before they're ready for the fuel transfer demo, she didn't hesitate to respond. I would say none of that's required, she said, adding, NASA reaps the benefit of it by good pricing as a result of their commercial model, but it is not a requirement that we have. Her words make one thing crystal clear. NASA trusts SpaceX to figure things out on their own, even the wild, untested challenge of refueling a spacecraft in orbit. That's a huge departure from how NASA used to work with legacy contractors like Boeing or Lockheed Martin, where every step was spelled out in painstaking detail. This new dynamic feels more like a business partnership than a boss-employee relationship. NASA's letting SpaceX push the boundaries, blow things up, like Flight 8, and learn through trial and error, as long as it ultimately delivers on NASA's goals. But make no mistake, even though Watson Morgan said there's no strict requirement, the message is crystal clear. SpaceX must keep pushing forward. If they can't nail a successful refueling demo by late 2025, NASA won't think twice about turning to backup options like Blue Origin. Maybe it's time for SpaceX to tighten things up. This is the second time in a row Starship has failed and exploded, and it could seriously shake NASA's expectations for this year. Especially given the current situation, NASA is set to shut down several offices and cut staff to comply with an executive order from President Donald Trump. In a statement released on March 10th, the agency announced that, to optimize our workforce and in compliance with an executive order, NASA is beginning its phased approach to a reduction in force, known as a RIF, officials stated. The statement didn't specify the number of employees affected or name the executive order, but it likely points to the order Trump signed on January 20th, his first day back in office for a second term. For NASA's $4 billion HLS development program awarded to SpaceX, the failure of Flight 8 could slow down progress on critical technologies like in-orbit refueling, potentially pushing Artemis 3 even further down the timeline. And with NASA cutting staff and shutting down key strategic offices, they no longer have the internal resources to mitigate delays or pick up the slack for Elon Musk's company. What's more, with the massive budget behind the HLS program, a high-profile failure like Flight 8 could spark doubts in Congress and the Trump administration about the return on investment, especially with NASA facing budget cuts including a projected 50% slash to science funding, according to the Planetary Society. The Workforce Reduction, RIF, further weakens NASA's ability to closely oversee SpaceX, amplifying financial risks if the company doesn't turn things around fast. On top of that, after the incident, the FAA immediately stepped in, requiring SPACEX to conduct a full investigation, as they do after every mishap. Starship is now grounded until the FAA reviews and approves the final report and corrective actions. But with this being the second consecutive failure after Flight 7's crash in January, the FAA might tighten the approval process even further. This raises a serious risk. SpaceX may not hit the 25 flights the FAA cleared for this year, dragging down timelines for both SpaceX and NASA. And perhaps the most critical point, China is aiming to land astronauts on the moon by 2030. If Starship keeps stumbling through failed test flights, the U.S. risks losing its lead in the new space race. With the Trump administration pushing a manifest destiny to the stars, the pressure on SpaceX to recover and deliver will be immense. Meanwhile, NASA, stretched thin from budget cuts and workforce reductions, may not have the capacity to provide the support SpaceX needs to turn things around. If that happens, it would be a big shock, right? But don't lose hope just yet. 
SpaceX has stunned the world before with its breakneck pace of innovation, and they're still the brightest beacon of hope. Flight 9 could very well be the spectacular comeback we've all been waiting for. So far, SpaceX has launched eight test flights, from early explosions to catching the super heavy booster with chopsticks on Flight 5. In just five years, they turned a wild idea into the world's most powerful rocket, capable of carrying 150 tons to orbit. Compared to NASA's decade-long development of SLS, SpaceX moved three times faster, and for a fraction of the cost, Flight 8's failure? Flight 8 is just a small hiccup in SpaceX's long journey. Every time they fail, they bounce back faster than we expect. At Starbase, engineers are already deep in the grind, fine-tuning the Raptor engines and tackling persistent issues like fuel leaks head-on. The team pours over flight data, obsessing over every detail to make the spacecraft more reliable, more powerful, and one step closer to being the backbone of interplanetary travel. NASA watches this relentless progress closely, not just as technical refinement, but as living proof that their trust in SpaceX was well-placed. The moon is a critical milestone, but let's be honest, it's not the end goal. Mars is the real finish line. SpaceX's failures forge resilience. When Starship Flight 9 finally soars, it won't just be a rocket. It'll be humanity's first giant leap toward a multi-planetary future. When it's all said and done, SpaceX will come back stronger than ever. That's a wrap for today. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss the next launch. See you next time. Keep reaching for the stars.